they can't win. Uh, or they, yeah, Seeker can't win against. Then you have the top lane with probably Venno Bane, which I also don't see them winning against. And they, to be honest with you, also have bad heroes to keep Timber away in the off lane. What do they have? They have a Shaker and a Baden. He can just Timber chain across the Fissure and no one's going to stop him, right? Mm. So. VP have a lot of laning potential. I like their draft a lot for that reason. If Secret, however, do get off to good lanes, I would totally be with you that probably mid late game favors the Secret lineup. I guess I, I have like, I'm tunnel but, visioned. I just look, okay, 40 minutes in the game, let's say it's even. Secret yeah. lineup's amazing. And I feel like every but game goes to that point, but it's not always the case, obviously. If it's even 40 minutes in, VP has misplayed, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think there's, it's a lot to them, them themselves what they want to do here. All right, Both. so game five of the grand finals of the XMG Captain's Draft 2.0. Let's go over the lineups for Team Secret. Kuroki playing Necrophos. Puppy on Abaddon. S4 playing PA, which is very interesting. Misery on Batrider. And No Tail on one of his patented heroes, the Earthshaker, with the Golden Totem. Very important to, to mention here. Looking for the bounty room. And on VP. Let's see who gets the, the bounty room. Sedoys. Forcing away Misery, it looks like. Oh. Who clicks fastest? Okay, Misery wasn't really trying. That's 100 XP and gold for Sedoi. And 100 XP and gold for the okay. Necrophos offlane. This is really interesting. So, Sedoi will be playing the Timber bot lane. Mid lane is going to be, as expected, Jotam Lich together with G Morphling. And then top lane will be BZZ on Venno with Yal Bane. They will be facing a Necro Abaddon lane. And the reason I think this is funny is there was. There's this guy, I think currently he plays for BBC. Uh, the Balkan Bears is the team Weeha plays in as well. I guess he's the more famous player from the team. He's number one on the Europe ranking still, I think. This guy, I think it's called Pedrinho, would play Necrophos offlane and convince one of his teammates every game to play a bad end. <laughs> but they would run this lane and it's extremely difficult to kill. And you just, you think you have the kill and then you narrowly miss it and then you lose a hero. And then the lane is over. If Necrophos and Baden get one or two kills here, they you just can't kill them anymore. So it's a thin line that VP are walking on this lane and they need to play very well. Kroki goes Seems level like one Jotun's into Heartstopper. Here. They're gonna commit a lot of damage to huh. shutting that down. What do you think about PA versus Morphling 1v1 then, instead of a dueling like you thought? I think Morph should win. Uh, has the range advantage. Can get more out of Bottle Crowing, I would say. He has more powerful nuke. And I think that's the reason VP are doing it. They're they're realizing that this is probably a one lane without Lich, and then they give PA some more farm, but at the cost of what could be first blood top, but nice TP from Shaker. Oh, it could be a big block, we'll see. BZZ is gonna be the target first of choice. Blood. First blood goes the way of No Tail with the longest auto attack of all time first on that Earthshaker. And yeah, that TP certainly paid off. PA was killed mid the way. Who got first blood then? Okay, Morphling got PA after that. Radiance that's, oh, that's, that's, that's a bigger Under kill. Attack. That's an even bigger kill. Let's bottle for G. Try Together to force him with his... stifling dagger. Uh oh. He's gonna run right into No Tail with that newly first blood. Doesn't have enchant totem or anything like that. Not that it would matter. It's a wooden stun. He's continuing to morph. A long time. 300 damage. They get him though. He has no mana whatsoever. <laughs> And that's a kill for S4. But of course, he splits that XP three ways, so not yeah. quite the same impact. Morph is still as full level ahead. Indeed. And the thing about S4's item build in this mid lane, he's got poor man's shield first and some tangos. Oh but... boy, Kuroki top lane all alone. This is what happens. Oh, never mind. Puppy's here. <laughs> Can't quite kill him. Actually, he stays very long, but we'll oh, see if he ends up paying dividends. They're going to get one kill out of it. It's a one for one. Definitely not a good trade for Secret. No tail. Oh my god, this Big isn't happening. Gets kill. <laughs> How is this happening? No tail is everywhere. And He's been the bad and died. You know, the bad and died because he got the kill with Miss Coil. He got so low that he could die to poison stain. <laughs> this is hilarious. If he had denied wow. himself, that would have been a, a huge win for Secret. Mid lane G, laying down the law. He's still out leveling pretty big time. Although we just talked about 30 seconds ago, so chances that change is pretty unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom lane, we haven't talked about it at all, by the way. So, Batrider versus Timbersaw. What do you think about this matchup? Looks like a wash for now, and I think that makes sense. Both of them are just going to farm. Neither can really initiate very well into the other. If someone has an edge when the fight breaks out, it's probably Timbersaw when he has level 6. But until then, Batrider can stack up all the napalm he wants, but he will never get a chance to kill Sedona. He can always just Timber Chain away, so he can play like this, which and very few heroes charges. can against Bat. Yeah, Good he's going to have 10 sticks. He should just use them now, I think, too. Start getting more charges. 
no mid lane. I mean, we're looking at Secret Sign. I'm so used to seeing them with such great gank potential, but Abaddon, obviously very defensive in nature. He's gonna have to use Aquatic Shield on himself. Stifling Dagger now on G, but I'm used to seeing like Marana from the sideline, Vengeful Spirit, something with like a, a nice stun combination. They have No-Tail and it's worked out really well, but I feel like just because No-Tail is all over the place. His rotations have been perfect. He's looking for top again. This is a less likely kill, I would say, because BZZ is now starting to play more passively, and when Koro is playing this aggressively, they know that someone's up to Sniff. Sniff? <laughs> and they're just pulling back. So this rotation didn't work. He might have also been spotted by this Radiant Ward around, or this Dire Ward around mid, which will now once again come into play for G. I don't know. It's Secret are gaining a head start, which I think is perfect for them. If they can just play even in the early game, I think it's good. So the question is, for VP, how do you come back in this one? I think that one's a little oh bit trickier. Oh, oh, he's jump. going for it, but the morph is there, as in the ability morph. <laughs> and the and hero, he, got, he got his bottle back. He could go for this. He's going to try. Waveform is up level 3. Here comes Bane, yeah. The that's a very, nightmare. very dead. Our second figure's not going to get by this time, and an easy kill. Assassin. Bane's going to get it. Nice. Not sure if that was intended or not, but either way, they get the kill. And all of a sudden, Misery has taken over bottom lane. A little bit surprising to me how he suddenly got a 10 CS lead after they were dead even. Experience um, still in the form of, or still in the advantage of Sadoi. See yep. how big of a threat that ends up being. Puppy this Kroki should gonna not be a kill. He still has oh, the Sadoi. sticks, Tango. Five stacks, has his ulti, trying to chop down some trees. He's gonna fall. Misery though, if he trades his life, he's nice bottling. He's oh, this bit. close! That's gonna be it. He actually died because he wanted to sticky napalm, I think. Probably could have run in a straight line and lived, but that's really important for y'all to get back in that. And I want to say, this is not a lane timber should be dying to, one on one. He overextended, he used his sticks too late, got it, got into a pretty bad position for, for jumping as all. Oh, that's not oh, gonna work out, he's still on the wrong side. Counter TP. They're not gonna so go I'm not further. interested in going for that one. Jotum level and no four. Tell to get the room. Man, Lich is just gaining so many levels. I mean, ever since they changed Sacrifice, we haven't seen him that much, honestly, but uh, still a noteworthy change of the recent patch. Well, not this recent patch, like three ago, but either way. Mm, No-Tail, level three. Rune on Shaker. Yeah, if he was level six, it would be a little bit better. Does he have Aftershock yep. right now? Yes. Oh, he doesn't have a Chant Totem, so he's going full levels in, in Fissure. This is the standard support, though. And he's going to be looking for BZZ, and BZZ will feel very safe because he has this play board. It's basically working against him right now. Bottom and that's lane, probably going to be a kill. On BZZ gets the Gale off, attack. but right click oh, should might. suffice. Oh, Another really long close. range auto attack of good old Earthshaker. Sadoi. Who did he get a kill puppy. on? Oh, yeah, an Abaddon, okay. Got the Abaddon, and Misery is now heading down here. Soon has Blink. That's a very early Blink bottle boots. The Triple Bs. Sadoi doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Oh, he, misses he actually the chain. misses the timber chain. Lasso, not enough mana for it yet. Don't even think doesn't they need it. it. Okay, well, maybe they do. Or maybe. Uh, they can a couple more auto attacks will do it. Product Shield is there just in case. Defensive measures from BZZ. They don't want to reinitiate. He could just go buy his Blink Dagger right now and use the Lasso. That would be his big surprise factor for Misery. See, that ends up being the case. Looks like but he's so not much thinking about it. He doesn't have mana for Lasso yet, and even if he does, he doesn't have Firefly. I don't think they can kill the Venom with their combination of arrows, maybe. Since he can't attack six, during man. the Lasso, it's just to disable and nothing else. That's true. And he'll be moving into the jungle. Alright, looking at the farm, 37 and 10 on the Morphling versus the PA 21 and 4. It's not too bad for uh, Well, it's still advantage, obviously, going more from that. As you said, it was to be expected. G's gonna get a regen rune here, bottled up. And Misery's gonna get the bounty. And he's even gonna get a jungle stack. He's gonna be a very far and bad rider. He gets two double stacks, as well as... Oh, he doesn't go for the triangle, for some reason. Doesn't get the... You and triangles. Well. I love it. <laughs> Mighty Ducks. I probably don't understand that reference at all, but that's okay. We'll just yeah, pretend you do. I'm stupid like that. I don't okay. know. I don't know if that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a movie rest. It's okay. Kuroki level 7 at top lane. Timbersaw has transitioned to top. And, man, these supports are really getting levels, I have to say. I'm not used to this. 
Almost everybody has their ultimate now. Abaddon and Lich early. the only two. And surprising, Lich is going to be the last. To be honest, yeah, most true. likely. Ah, oh, yeah, Puppy is still ahead. Lich might overtake him right before level 6, but... You generally see Lich getting level 6 as the first support in the game if there isn't a jungler, but... They're going to initiate case, on the S4, G. and Bane is here to finish him off if need be. Can he get in range? Double TP. Cycling dagger Very on nice play by S4, oh, now the counterplay. It's the Fissure if he wants to use it on somebody. Now Bane is way too far away. They're going to go for Jotam. Lasso's up, not even needed. The crit is there. S4 gets Gale. It's only a level 1 Gale. TP's out just in case, but wouldn't have been near enough damage to kill him off. Just like that, another trade of zero heroes for one. <laughs> Great trade all around. Good trade. Top lane, Yol. Still has Fiend's Grip, because he was in range last time. Oh, that's Timber a big saw... kill if they can get Chakram it. Chakram not going to connect, they but will. the Fiend's Grip is there. Chakram will be up in four seconds if he did not. Is oh. It is not. Attack. Nice top. They can't let like Chorus end up here in free farm. It's really important he doesn't get to do that. It's If, bottom if both PA and attack. Necro get decent farm, they don't even need to be very high up. But if they get decent farm and Batrider has good farm, I think Seeker are looking great. It's a very even game for now, but... With Morphling going Midas, perhaps that's going to tilt things in DP's favor, because there's no hero on the Radiant that can really do it. So that economic advantage will be going their way. Radiant's middle tower and they're hard to push attack. into too. We haven't talked so much about that actually, the, the pushing potential. Usually if you have a lineup with Adam and Necro, you're looking to push towers because of the sustained heal. Mm -hmm. But you don't really have anything on... Uh, or Apart from that, they don't really have any good pushing tools. And DP have Plague Wards, they have... Uh, waveform, situational, but Chakram is really good, so it will be difficult for Seeker to take the talent. And then Morph can just farm with that Midas. We have yet to see the Necrophos ult come into effect yet. Even the early kills, just putting somebody on the sideline for 30 seconds is pretty huge. In fact, it doesn't scale, it's just 30 seconds all around, so you could argue it's just as good early. Nah, it's not true, late game is much better is in certain attack. situations, but still, 30 seconds on the deck is a pretty big deal in the early stages of the game. Lich just about to hit level 6. He's going to be the last one to do so. That's Top a big ult Echo Slam, Fissure, Enchant Totem. I don't think he has enough of that. Some help. The Misery's here. No Tail. Oh my god, look at the damage. The Lasso, along with the Firefly. No Tail better be careful. He's going to get finished off. Sadoi. Well, he's going to trade his life, but that is a, an amazing trade if you really think about it. Venomancer ends up getting killed on Necrophos. Speaking of trades. And that's with the help of Morphling. So Necrophos getting pretty much nothing at the moment. Dyer's top has tread. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make this prediction. Whoever gets two towers first is gonna win the game. We'll see if that holds true. Okay. Because I two think towers. this game right now is so much about who has who gets to move around the map. And if if VP are able to get the spot tier one anytime soon with Venom as well as the mid, they're looking so good for for potential on the map. They're gonna grip on misery. Misery. And a nice finger on both him and BZZ. They're gonna get the first kill. And the second one to follow, the Poison Nova is used. It's going to force everybody out. It's going to heal Puppy a little bit, in fact. And away they go. Kuroki, though, he's here. And they reinitiate is... back into this. Not sure if Fissure's going to be back online. Chain Frost is available. It's up. Jot him extremely on. low. And down he goes. So Sadoi is the only one up here. And there's the Necrophos. Oh my god, I thought that was going to be enough to finish him off, but it wasn't. G. He's trying to be cleanup crew. Abaddon goes down. We got one. In the end. Now it's a 1v1 versus Kuroki. This didn't end too well last he's time. He's not going to get this kill. 1400 gold now on Kuroki, just like that. And S4 wasn't there. So this means the mid tier 1 is going to take some pretty significant Dyer's damage down to half. Top lane tower is down to a third. And I was talking about VPs. If they if they get two towers first, they'll just start keep pressuring the map with Venno and Morphling split pushing and just farm more than Secret will and, and get some key pickoffs. But on the on the contrary, if Secret are the one getting those kills, yeah, this is not this is not gonna happen. If Secret are the ones getting the towers, they can roam with that bat rider and find kills. And Necrophos can just free farm, and that mid game is gonna be late game is gonna be a nightmare for DP. So towers so so important in the next ten minutes. Lasso was so close there, but. Not gonna happen this time around. And in fact, he has 1,900 gold. You're talking about he's farming well. He's really farming well. He's gonna get that four staff not too far away. G with that Midas has 2k gold. Is this a? You talked about the early shotgun. We'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna have initiation bottom perhaps. Blink. Radiant. Flame. Or Firefly lasso. It's a doy. 
gonna be tough to get out of this one. In fact, he goes down. Oh, Yol was trying to help. He was. I think he's gonna be okay. They don't have a whole lot of mobility other than the Bat Rider, and without Lasso, there's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, Urshik, and once he gets that blink, then you have more possibility for diving the tower. But what was I saying? Oh, shotgun. You go it right away. Lincoln's against Necrophos ult. He's getting boots of travel first. Whoa! Dyer's bottom not tower. Greedy. sure Under how attack. sold I am on this idea. That is super greedy. Radiance top He's gonna maximize his farm. He's definitely playing the farm game, no doubt about it. Hot nightmare. We can just be removed by puppy and then make counter initiate. Here comes the boy. So good. Chakram not gonna hit its mark. And away secret goes. Meanwhile, BZZ is putting on... some good pressure mid. Oh, <laughs> talk about boost of travel. Tower. Okay. I get the four staff. No. Is this a situation where he, I mean, I, I'm guessing he probably was Radiant's just saving for the whole time, but if you see boost of travel on Morphling and say, okay, maybe I should get boost of travel myself. Does that enter the minds of the players? No, I don't think he saw them either. He's been in the jungle this whole time, I guess? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Even then, I don't, I don't think that's the that's the point for Misery here. He just, he's looking, it's kind of, it's similar to Morphling in the sense that they want to be on all over the map. They want to do it for different reasons, but the logic is the same. They want to be able to help out the team when necessary. Misery wants to help out with being the aggressor, and VP wants, Radiant's or G wants to jump in last second attack. and help for the fight. But this just ups his farm rate more than probably any other item he could get. Mm -hmm. But I think there would be a lot of potential in going either the combat build on Morph with Manta or a very fast Evelade, which he could have got probably like 20 minutes he could have had one. Or maybe even less. And then just start killing people left, right, and center. But at this point I wouldn't recommend Evelade. Then it's going to be too late. Now there's now it's probably the combat path we'll be taking. Is there oh, very taking some stacks from Morph who replicates back at it into the base to gain some much needed mana. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what this next item's gonna be. Boots to travel into something, obviously, but... Uh, Kuroki, I was hoping he'd go Blink. Thank baby Jesus. Love Blink Dagger on, on Necrophos. Get in good position, get a beautiful ult. I mean, really needs to hit level 2. The, that ult is... I can say it's garbage, but they have to be extremely low for it to actually get the kill. Fisher coming out. Sedoi biding his time. He's going for a Bloodstone. It's gonna be a pretty late Bloodstone. What is this? BZZ. Speaking of items, no tail. Blink dagger? Getting Very close. close. He's gonna get it now. That's a 16 minute blink arcane on this four shaker. <laughs> it's exceptionally he fast. He's also been in 11 kills. He's been. This has been a very good shaker performance. He's been playing very well all night, to be honest. I think he's been very solid in all the games. Correct me if I'm wrong. We had him on no, last like game. garbage. <laughs> yeah, he's been good. No, I think he's been the standout player, if you had to choose one for me. Yule Scepter picked up by Venno, and that's going to be a great counter to the Bat Rider, who I think needs to go BKB um, in response to that. Obviously, Yule's is good no matter what, but uh, something to keep in mind for these fights. As VP is smoked up, looking for a gank, maybe they just transition to a tier 1. Yeah, if they're already down here when Secret sees them, the tower is gone. But it's probably just going to be a trade for top then, which has 400 health, so... Tier 1 trades, mid lane, I don't think S4 can Radiant's really threaten this tower. There's two Plague Wars delaying him quite a bit, pushing out his wave. As G is even going to join bottom, attack. and he will be going to combat build. That's the ultimate orb. Most likely looking for Manta first. Unless he could, could be Lincoln's, technically. Or Lincoln's. Uh, I like Radiant's I like the idea of Manta here attack. against Batrider. If you pop it fast when you blink Lassos, he loses Dyer's his target, top tower and you can just turn around the fight. Dyer's but alternatively, you think yeah, he ends up going BKB this game? I don't know. I, I feel like one of the two is needed. Lincoln's or BKB against Necrophos. Is the Lincoln's really good though? I think so. It's good against Bat until he has a force and then he can break it. But stifling dagger can just remove it all the time. Boy. Echo slam being popped. Into a chant toad, he all goes by, but that's the first time with engage of Sedoi. Beautiful Chakra dealing so much damage. He does find his way to the grave, however. BZZ chopped down by Big Daddy No Tail. Jonathan has no mana to speak of, but it's not gonna matter. Here comes Necrophos Old. Bye bye. That is a two for four. Morphling the lone survivor for VP. Long enough. Boots to travel not strong enough, I guess. Broke level 11 now. And oh boy, Radiant took two towers. You know what that means for the prophecy. Uh, GG, guys. GG. <laughs> Yeah.
the thing is, this the way this game is, this isn't just about the towers and all of this, it's a little bit unfair, because the game isn't even apart from the towers. Secret also have a lead on top of that, so... Right. If it were just a flat-out even game on, on Golden XP, I still think the map control, just this early map control, will be such a big snowball factor in this particular game compared to a lot of others, but... Well... See if VP can pull it back. They're definitely at a pretty significant disadvantage right now. Bad, right? And Lasso's not, not up for another 10 seconds. Can you explain this to me? I don't think it really matters if he doesn't pick any of it up, but it's just weird. Kuroki went uh, Blade of Alacrity. It's going to be an Agonims. I feel like that's the last thing you pick up, but if it's going to be sitting in the base, I suppose it doesn't matter. That's really weird, isn't it? Yeah, I have no idea. That is really odd. Maybe it's like one of those auto buy things that he has bound, and that's the first item listed, or something like that. Is that it's possible? Well, you could say, like you said, it doesn't matter if he wants an item; he will get the orb, the orb first. But well, he has that on the courier right now as well. There is no advantage to buying this man, unless if he thinks the armor is going to be better than the health of Ogre Club, and it won't. <laughs> and the attack speed is still worse than the int. Dyer's but as a hybrid item, it attack. gives both defensive and aggressive potential with armor and attack speed. None oh, of the others yeah, look at that not. attack speed. Oh wait, he doesn't have it right now. No. It could be benefiting him greatly if he had it in his inventory, for sure. But that's well, definitely... There's going to be a, a defense here, mounted for BP. Power is not quite deniable. Decision time for Gene. Secret's going to leave it. Pass the money for his next part. Buy the Yasha, or... Either the Perseverance or a second orb. Let's see if he buys Purse here. No. Nope. There's, There's the a Battle, battle Fury suddenly. For S4. So this is going to close the gap on farm. You can see G is still pretty far ahead by about 2,000, but the following three trailing behind him are Secret Heroes. And PA will be starting to, to catch up a little bit, I think, with their map control. With this top tower being gone, S4 can start farming the Dire Jungle. And this is... This is pretty important right now, the economy battle. As there's not much else going on for now. Yeah, both teams know how crucial this game is because it's a oh, G. do or die. G gets initiated up. He's going to strike more because that skill is absolutely ridiculous. Echo Slam is on top of it. Can they get a big crit? Is it going to matter? He is still alive somehow. S4 in the meantime, not so lucky. He goes down to Sedoi. No tail. Extremely slow thanks to BZZ. More playing. Did he use a replicate or he just waveformed out? I'm not sure. Lich Ult flying out. Jaws gonna go down to the Kuroki ult, but he's gonna fall shortly after the three for one disastrous fight for Secret overall. As Abaddon gets slept, Misery, is there anything he can do for his comrade? Don't think so. And that is four kills going the way of VP. Could they get more? I don't know. Misery's Firefly is about to end. He'll be close if he can oh, get a couple nice more shot. kills upon him. He's out. Now he has absolutely nothing but blink. TP. Oh, stuck. Oh, so you're stuck. I'm trying to try to check on him again. But he thought Misery was out. Still, that's just that's so huge for VP that G gets out there with by the skin of his teeth. If he dies, the follow-up four for two would not have been that disastrous for Secret. But more staying alive and getting back to farming very fast. This is very very important. That's a pretty big swing. That's a 5k loss. Holy shit! They actually lost 5k on that. What's their streak? Oh yeah, Kuro had mega kill, and that was given to Jotam. So That's the two ultimates from Kuroki that have been he kind of has to use them on like There's support heroes games. that don't matter that much. Yeah. Especially once I mean, Lich already used his ult. His effectiveness in the fight has gone down drastically as a result, and unfortunately, it's the only target of choice that he had. Well, Secret should have probably just cut their losses. To be honest, when when that kill didn't work out and they lost two, they could have. You know, they chose to go in again with Kuro and Puppy on the Abaddon. And Batrider was already pretty drained on resources. So they essentially took a three on four, a little bit reminiscent of that fight we saw in, was that game one? I think it was, where they had a hero die and then they still tried to fight outnumbered without the best sort of initiation angle and just lost more. It was kind of the same play here where sometimes you just gotta call it a bad fight and get out. But without BKBs right now happily. on VP, this is where Necro gets super scary. So Ags is done. He has the blink, obviously. Level 2 ult. Can pretty much take most of these heroes down when they're somewhat close to half HP. Except for Morphling with that Lincolns. And Dyer's what do they have to pop the Link? I guess they have Stifling attack. Daggers, like the best possible Dyer's spell to use. Or Mist Coil is also excellent. 
They actually have a lot of things to take out. Tier 1 tower taken out. Dyer's bottom tower has All right. I'm not that big of a fan of Lincoln's runner. this game. Do you think if he goes Lincoln's, he kind of has to go BKB too? Just Probably, so many yeah. spells. But I don't think he's going to go BKB Radiant's next. He's going to go that third. Attack. This Radiant's tower, does Secret really want to try this? Looks like it. There goes the Lincoln's, Lincoln's just stifling bomb. He's going to jump in, warp the strength a bit. That's for still on the Phonic Shield. Whoa. Okay, now Misery could find an strike. opening. Oh, nice Plague Ward. Preventing the blink. It's Those gonna things find are nothing. so annoying. Radiance okay, middle middle get to the Night Tower, so that's definitely something. Regeneration. When I hear Adaptive Strike for some reason, as we're gonna see it here yet again, is G actually gonna go for this? No. It just sounds very similar to Ethereal Blade. I'm like, no fucking way is <laughs> Ethereal Blade. So similar. Ice Armor's available. They can get Roche. Do they have a medallion? Actually, Ags! Almost complete on BZZ. Yeah. Does he go blink, you think, after that? Or he should. He really should. Blink. That is, that is just a lot of Just needs to get in over the top of them, because the crazy thing about Venom with blink is you blink and you ult. Then you've done a lot in the fight, right? But at the same time, the enemy team can't really ignore you after that. They still have to take you out, or else you're going to be annoying with Gale, with multiple plague wars, just keep on slowing and dealing a lot of damage over time with Sting. So the vast majority of your potential gets unlocked in the beginning, but you're still not a nobody after that. And I would say that's great, because that opens up space for the Morphling, it opens up space for the Timber Saw, especially if key abilities need to be used to kill that Venom, like Fissure, maybe even an Echo Slam, or the Reaper Scythe would be the absolute grand prize to force out by the Venom after using all. So, I would say, yes. Blink, Dyer's best item. Yes. Alright, they're gonna go for Roche. It's gonna cost them a tier 2 in all likelihood. And... There's the medallion. Not the greatest Roche lineup, but they do have ice armor, they do have medallion. That's, that's enough. Fortified. They fortify the latest as much as possible. Dyer's top tower you can support all the agility. Dyer's top tower There's the axe. And what level is this ult now? Level 2. Roshan has Very powerful. To the it's actually, I think the damage scales as well, so it's almost, it's a level 3 ult right now. Essentially, right? The Necrol? No, the, the Venom. The oh, damage. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so then after that just gets so scary. So it's essentially just level 16 right now. So you have Initiation, Misery, can't quite get the lasso off, and it's four steps out. TP support on the way. Venom has not a whole lot of bonus. Nice figure. Gonna block everybody. Right when he throws the Timber Chain as well. Didn't even get in. Good old No Tail. What's he going for? Going for a four step for himself. Pretty close to finishing that up. Alright, 2500 gold for Morphling. This is going to be the moment of truth coming up shortly. Radiant's um, bottom tower without Aegis, is under or with Aegis, I should say. Don't really have to worry about buyback too much. And he's a great Aegis carrier as well. That should definitely be noted. Yep. Are there any BKBs on the horizon? Yes. BKB. Yeah, he's starting PA to go almost now. has hers, Batrider almost has his, and G should be seeing this. Uh, probably, if he's seen the Ogre Club on PA, she she obviously will go BKB in this game, she has to. So I, once again, I don't think E-Blade is the path to take at this point. I think the combat morph is nice, and try to shut down the Necro, although... If Necro doesn't want to be KP, oh, then you blade has a lot more value. Radiant's oh, if he gets a TP, this is going to be a big attack. ult, I think. Okay, just he just blocking them off, just being in the way. That is a sweet ass looking fissure, Dyer's by the way. I love it. Yeah. Just a bunch of coins. Radiant's <laughs> top tower is under attack. Alright, tier 1 tower in all likelihood Radiant's is dead. Structures are fortified. What does Secret get out of this? Nothing at the moment. They're going to start to push tier 2 bot. Benno steals that last hit from poor Morphling, who needs the Midas desperately. So he replicates the mid lane to do just that. Dyer's bottom <laughs> tower is under 3,500 gold on him. That's a thousand gold. I'm really in surprised that he just let Secret do this. Looks like they might. No, Yol is going to go in now, but there's no fortify either. It's kind of low. Double TP action. Yol is going to go down before he can use any spell. Venom ult. It is Ag, like we talked about. S4 pops his BKB. He's going to TP out. He's going to get canceled from the chain. Frost blinks out, trying to get somebody. BZZ taking a crit to the face. Does S4 go back Radiant's in? Is the question. That's a 10 second BKB, attack. mind you. Misery has blink available. Nice blink up from S4 onto Kuroki. Oh, they have no idea They're he gonna went be looking there. for more. They, they can't find him. anybody. Radiant's top tower. What a misery. 
and S4 can go back in now. Although G's right behind him. Yeah, G's gonna want this fight for sure. Oh, G is gonna take a lot of damage. This is enough, it is! The Necro ult goes down, but of course that is the Aegis. So none of the extra benefits from that Reaper Scythe will come into effect. And I believe Echo Slam is still up and available. So no -Tail wasn't able to maneuver himself. This was a really good skirmish from Secret. Very well done. They got the kill, they almost got the tower, they saved the PA with a really nice show up from Kuro, giving the blink strike, and then they do bait and morph again, get a free kill and just back out. They lost nothing on that. One B give each arch, if you will, <laughs> on S4 was the was the trade-off thing. Uh, keep in mind, as so later the game goes and the BKBs get less and less effective as far as uh, duration concerns. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Venom ult, if you use it before you, like, Veno ult is used, you BKB, once the BKB is up, the Veno ult continues, correct? Yes, it should stick through. Just double checking. Puppy and that also down. means that the soon-to-be Aghanims on Timbersaw is gonna be real scary. This hero does scale very well into, into late game compared to what he used to, just because of that Ag chain and nothing else. It's just, it's twice the damage on that skill, right? You just throw two and you have the mana pool and you have the bloodstone, so. Come, let's see how far is he away. It's just, he is 1,200 away from the Ags. Completing at 1,100 at this point. That's gonna be a huge pickup. Then it's just a matter for VP about living through the burst and then he can start wrecking shit. He's gonna deal massive amounts of damage. Level three chakra now as well. And you're right about G, he's going for that Manta unless it's an S and Y, which would be fitting for this tournament, obviously. <laughs> S4, still Pretty nine second BKB. <laughs> Why? It's, it's a great utility item. And we have a nice offensive ward from Jotham. To the enemy jungle. There's the BKB finish for Batrider. So the Yules, I don't think I've seen a Yules cancel uh, the lasso initiation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, um, no, I don't think we have. Now we probably will have, have. Yeah, we probably won't see that now, for sure. Unless it's later. I don't think it's the only merit to getting the Yules, oh, no, no, though. Of course. For BZZ. And there's oh, a bail. He gets bail over Blink. I still oh. think Blink would have been. This is greedy, right? Because now there's the risk that he can't get the angle. Mm -hmm. And I would say for this kind of game, I think it's more valuable to have a reliable, powerful ult than uh, an unreliable, ridiculous one. He's got great synergy with Lich, of course, with this kind of, to some extent, Morphling and a little bit Bane. But Timbersaw doesn't really do that well with the veil. Because he pure does damage. pure damage all the time. Is he possibly getting for the lasso? He gets the veil and the ult off, does BZZ. Kuroki looking for an ult. Does he actually want to use it yet? Yeah, Echo Slam coming into effect. G at half HP, morphing up strength. Venom is the only casualty in this engagement so far. Puppy pops his ult, getting healed thanks to that chain pop. Sadoi in a timber chain away. Looks like he's going to be okay, at least for now. G going back in. Kuroki, I think he used his ult. Who was that on? It must have been on the. The Bane, I suppose, but Morphling ends up falling to the deck. Look at S-Force crits, left, right, center. He timber chains to a melee tree, basically, and ends up denying himself, which is nice in its own right. Jotam versus PA. Who wins, Sindarin? I think Jotam has his Tranquil Boots or really good armor versus <laughs> PA. Very survivable. They do have Fortify, but gone. I think he's going to get this. That was still a really good initiation from Secret. And VP getting a 4 for 4 trade now, I think they can be happy with. They're still going to lose their towers if Secret do come out ahead. And. Dyer's middle tower well, has fallen. I was just criticizing the Veil, but that really did work there. He got in regardless, had the time to get the Veil off. And Veil's and another spell like well Veno ult that it. Obviously, it doesn't do anything while it's BKB, but it's it, the duration stays in a similar fashion. So yes. once those BKBs get less and less effective, it's going to be a pretty big deal overall. Who did Necro ult? Was it Bane? I think did you see he that? might have Necro ulted the Morphling, who then had Lincolns on. Oh, that I'm not sure, because I don't remember seeing Radiant's the Necro ult killing him. Because if it did, there would have been a Reaper Scythe icon on their death marker. That's so I don't true. think he got any. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So it um, could have been the Lincolns, it could have been not enough for the kill at the same time. Pretty sure it was the Lincolns. He tried it on G before he replicated out. Now has the Manto as well. And the Timber, I, I think it's the, the biggest item the pickup clip. so far. The X and Timber is huge. No tail. Fissure is here as well. Enchant Totem. I think it's pretty close. I'm gonna leave him alone. Did he have Ags, Timber saw in that last fight? No, he just got it. Right, so and as I was getting at it, it doesn't have good synergy with uh, with Veil because he deals 
almost exclusively pure damage, actually exclusively if the Whirling Death is with a tree nearby. But it's not just that. Obviously, he deals more damage now, right? Screw the synergy with, with Veil. He also farms faster. So he can start working on a very much needed Shiva's guard. I think that would be really good against Secret's lineup. Although, Secret themselves are also getting some really big items. Almost Abyssal now on S4. Has the relic. He's probably got it after this camp. He needs 2950 for that Basher. Does he buy that without having a uh, buyback available to him? I think so. I think he will. There's no big risk involved. It's They won't be losing Rex if he dies, as long as they keep fighting on BP's half of the map. If they had a Meepo BP, then that'd be a different story, I suppose. Maybe, there we go. Misery has been initiating every single time. This is a big pick-off. Kuroki wants to get off a nice ult. They don't do that much damage right now. Here it comes. Bye-bye, Sadoi. -bye, no buyback no buy for, for 74 seconds. A nice chain run, so there's some things to tank it up. Echo Slam popped on two. Here comes the S4. Nice fuels by Venomans are going to keep him alive. A little bit longer, but the crits almost destroy Morphling in one hit. BZZ takes a crit to the face as well. Yul on the run. We have a buyback from Venomancer. S4 wants to continue the pressure. Misery not so sure. Going to back up for now. Puppy and company going to play it safe. There's the Abyssal Blade officially. This could be a big surprise factor. They can go back in. No, never mind. It's not a surprise factor anymore. Plague Wars. They might not have seen it, though. It's, he's only shown it for like three seconds. True. I just, uh, I just assume so, that they're constantly clicking. This is clicking, the though. hero VP can't get caught out, I think. Or there are two. It's Morphling and it's Timber. They lose the, the fight with Timber to, to Necrol. He has to either survive the, the Necrol or die to something else, basically. Alright, S4 takes it for Kuroki. I would give it to Kuro, I think. S4 is probably not gonna die the way this is going. Yeah, has said they give it to S4. No, I agree. I think Necro is one of the best. Uh, well, maybe not one of the best. He's a really good carrier. Aegis carrier. P is not that bad. Especially, no, it's, I'm, she's I'm really good she, too. She has BKB. It's another eight seconds. She didn't even use it in that last fight. Holy shit! S4 so can just play BKB aggressively still. now. The difference is he can force a reaction by going in because they have to deal with him, and he just doesn't use BKB on his first life. And then afterwards, he pops BKB, maybe the Abyssal on his second life, and then he's really dangerous. So. I understand the luck. I think it's good on both. It's really on the Yol and Oh, nice fuels, but I'm just gonna go on a limb here and say that Bane is dead. G doing what he can about the plague wards. Good split push. I'm getting close to a mech. Someone was porting, but they cancelled. Who's that? Not sure. Puppy cancelled his port to bottom. This means G Hiding will be getting this tower, tower, and I don't know attack. if. If Secret can just get in here, they're gonna Oh, try. they're gonna jump in Abyssal Blade. Venomancer's gonna be dead before he can get anything off it. In fact, Venomancer goes down to the Necro That's 105 seconds on the deck. S4 still has the Aegis to work with and the BKB already popped though. Gonna go for this tower now. Morphling still bottom lane. Fortify is not up. This is gonna be at least the tower, if not more. Can they defend without a Venomancer who didn't pop any of his skills? Because he was completely firm. They're going to try to go for the range rack. G. Adaptive Strike's really not going to be too scary at this current point in time. Range Rack's going to be the first to go down in all likelihood. The Lincoln is down. Here comes the jumping again. Beautiful Echo Slam on three into the figure. They completely blow up the Lich. Bane buys back when he immediately into the game. S4 trying to get as much as he can with his Aegis. They're going to clean up. Morphling the only one alive. Bane bought back. This is going to be a full set of racks. Can Secret do it? Could this be their first tournament win as champions, as a team, with Misery as their new stand-in? They're gonna go directly top lane. 53 seconds still on Venomancer. This is fucking ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Unbelievable. That that one jump just won the game, probably. They're gonna get two lanes of Rex. There's kind of no counterplay. Oh, Y'all up, up, up again. Oh my god, this is sick. And it's just... It looked like VP were going to hold that defense, but that beautiful jump from Misery just set up the fight entirely. He found the, one of the key targets. Venno is another really good one. I was talking a lot about Morph and Timber. Venno is top. In a way, just as important, if not even more important than, than the Morphling at this point, because of his defensive item build, Venno deals more damage. And taking him out for 100 just enables them to go in easily here. They still even have the Aegis. They didn't even get S4 killed. Played with all the confidence in the world, because VP just didn't have the damage there. Now S4 G still has the Aegis. <laughs> G's now going to get an MKB as a desperation measure. Morphling? Yeah, I, I feel like he's just, he's really paid for his item build this game. It's taken too long simply to come online. The boots of now travel he might be super strong, risky. but they're, they're two lanes down. And this is when he's 
This is when he's starting to deal damage this game, it feels like. It's just too late. Puppy's gonna get a haste. Aegis is up for another two minutes. They could do this all over again. They just get megas. Like, there's nothing stopping Secret at the moment. The MKB is gonna be a surprise, but we'll see how much difference it actually ends up making. Obviously not an item you want to get on a oh, stat base hero like Morphling. If he gets jumped, they it's know he doesn't have buyback. Does. There's no way he has buyback. The question is if VP wants to try to fight at this tower. They still don't have a blink on Venno. It's gonna be really hard for BZZ to get in and get that ulti off. This looks familiar. This looks like TI2. Smoke tower underneath the tower, but... Attack. Secret's a Rep little bit farther the name this time of the game. The tier fallen. 2. Patience from BZZ. Patience waiting from in the wings. BZZ. <laughs> is that the imitation of LD? <laughs> Could this be... Could this be the counter? This is the gonna counter. be the last stand. Puffy talked about the counter this. to his own no team. Tail. He's it's gonna get four staff. He gets the echo stop on three. Hero two get blown up right off the bat. G trying to do as much damage as possible. All he gets is the Earth Shaker. Puffy and company trying to do as much damage. Getting that Necker all that's it. He cannot buy back in the game. Seeker are gonna be your fucking champions. I don't know why I said fucking. That's the way it's gonna be. <laughs> oh my god. What a game played from Seeker and VP. This was one of the most entertaining series I have ever cast. Congratulations to Secret, winning 3-2, they take it the distance. Oh man, what a series. Wow. You were right about pretty much everything apart from a few things. You said five <laughs> games. You said VP were going to win, which was wrong. Yeah, you did call right. VP was going to win last game, which was also wrong. And against your original <laughs> statement of five games. But apart from that, you were spot on today. Great predictions. Thank you. I'm always Man, what good. a sick game, though. I, 